is our board man. There he is, Alex. Can you put up that uh, Bhajan uh, Sri Nama Kirtan? Yeah, yeah it's also known as Yasu Mati Nandana. Sumati Nandana Braja Badanada Yasumati Nandana Braja Badanada Yasumati Nandana Braja Bhadanagara Kukuranjana
So this is from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 7, Chapter 5, Prahlad, the saintly son of Hiranika Shipu, text number 27. Shantiya sadavo loke, Dormatras chadma vesinaha, Tesam udyetya gam kale, Rogapata kinam miva, Shantiya sadavo yoke. 
Dormatras Chadma Vesinaha Taisam Udyangam Taisam Udetyagam Kale Rogapataninam Rogapatakinam Iva Shantaya Sadavho Yoke Dormatras Chadma Vesinaha Taisamudityagam Kale Rogapatakinam Iva Shanti, Shanti. R. R. He. he, indeed, indeed. Asadava. Asadava, dishonest persons, dishonest persons. Loke. Loke, within the world, within the world. Durmatra. Durmatra, cheating friends, cheating friends. Chadma. Chadma, Vesinaha, Vesinaha. wearing false garbs, garbs. Tesham. Of all of them, them. UDT arises, arises. Agam, Agam, the reaction of sinful life, life. Kale, Kale, in due course of time, due course of time. Roga, Roga, disease, disease. Pata -nik Pata patakinam, of sinful men, of sinful men. Eva, Eva, like. Mm. So, uh, this is Ranikasipu, who is chastising the teachers of Prahlad Maharaj, thinking that they had taught him Krishna consciousness, which is a major offense. <laughs> At least in Kali Yuga it is. So, Translation, in due course of time, various types of diseases are manifest in those who are sinful. Similarly, in this world, there are many deceptive friends in false garbs. But actually, but eventually, because of their false behavior, they, their actual enmity becomes manifest. I'll read it again. In due course of time, various types of diseases are manifest in those who are sim sinful. Similar in this world, there are many deceptive friends in false garbs, but eventually, because of their false behavior, their actual enmity becomes manifest. Srila hmm. Prabhupada's purport. Being anxious about the education of his boy Prahlad, Harani Kashipu was very much dissatisfied. When Prahlad began teaching about devotional service, Harani Kashipu immediately regarding the teachers as his enemies, 
in garbs of friends. In this verse, the word roga pata ninam eva refer to disease, which is most sinful and miserable of the conditions of material life. Janma mityu jara vyadi, disease is the symptom of a body of a sinful person. Mm. Brahmahat shaya rogi syad surapa swava dantakaha swarnahari tu kunaki duschama guru taupakaha. Murderers of Brahmas are later afflicted by tuberculosis. Drunkards become toothless. Those who have stolen gold are afflicted by diseased nails. And sinful men who have sexual connections with the wife of a superior are afflicted by leprosy and similar disease, skin diseases. Hare Krishna. Okay, any doctors here? No. Okay, okay, you're going to be needed, especially in Kali Yuga. So, Om Agyan, Timiranda Sya, Gina Jana Salakaya, Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Vena Maha, Shri Chaitanya Manopi Stam Stapti Tam Yena Bhutale, Swayam Rupa, Gadamayam Dadati Svapadanti Kam, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine, Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine, Nirvishesa Sunyavari Pastyatya De Satarine, Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadad Har Sivasiri Gaur Bhakta Rin, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Mm. So, Rani Kashipu is a little disturbed here because he thinks his teachers are acting against his will. Therefore, he's becoming impetuous. Uh, sometimes we see that where a person doesn't examine a situation and immediately speaks about it in the wrong way. Sometimes they do that about other people without even knowing the person completely or the situation. People are quick to condemn something or criticize something or say something about something, someone, without knowing the whole situation. Maybe they see some, something and then they give a blanket uh, description of what they feel. And this, is, this can be very offensive. And we see here, because actually... Uh, these are, although they are teachers, and they are also our associates of Harani Kashyapu, and therefore they have tendencies of, for demoniac behavior, the sons of Sukaracharya. Um, they're Brahmanas. <laughs> they're Brahmanas. So, in that sense, Harani Kashyapu is, is offending a Brahmanas by speaking wrongly about them, not only criticizing, but it's all wrong. <laughs> So one has to be very, what we say, careful to understand a situation before you speak about it. Because a lot of times we say the wrong thing and we say what is called sophistry, half-truth. And because of that, we might, you know, misunderstand, we, we do, in fact, in fact, it actually says in the 11th canto, 28th chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, Verse one, that one should not, one should not praise another, and one should not criticize another, both. But then it goes on to give a sub injunction. But one can praise. <laughs> one should never criticize another, but one should know that criticism and praise always fall short of the reality. That's why the the, the statement is made. No one can see the whole picture, therefore when you, when you criticize, you don't understand everything behind it. Or when you praise, it's the same thing. But because Vaishnavas are into glorifying other Vaishnavas, we do praise. But the praise should be done in a way that it is uh, suitable for expression and not just glorification for the sake of glorification or to sound like some nice guy or a nice girl, people do that. There are, there are professional praisers, 
And actually, they have those people who invaded culture. They would praise, well, they would praise the supreme personality of Godhead or the pure devotees, and therefore, uh, they were called. Do you know the technical name for those people? There's a huh? No, it's. Uh, it's mentioned in Gopal Champu. There were two of them that were praising Krishna constantly in the assembly of Nanda Maharaj. Uh, they're, sometimes they're kind of called eulogizers, but that is another word for it, which is a Vedic term. Anyway, um, so this is, uh, therefore, of course, it says uh, that if one wants to really free themselves from any problems in devotional service. Don't criticize anybody. And Lord Chaitanya gives that principle. He says, if you want to receive my full mercy, or he actually says it in another way, um, I give my full mercy to those who chant the holy names of the Lord and develop a taste for chanting, and those who never find fault with others. A dosha darshi, dosha means faults, and a darsh, darshi means to see. But one who's a dosha darshi doesn't see the faults of others. Although a person may have faults, it doesn't, it doesn't really make a difference. It really, even if you see a fall or you feel disturbed by a certain fall, look for the good qualities in that. Now, in certain cases, when faults actually become uh, catastrophic and they disturb the whole society, then these things are need to be dealt with. But that's that's another principle. But in general, so here we're seeing Harani Kasipu. He's uh, he's supposed to be intelligent, and but he's making assumptions. The word assumption, assume, A S S U M E. So if you take the word and you say assume, to me assume means to make an ass out of you and me. Assume you, me, uh, so. So we, we, want to, we want to avoid that kind of, uh, what we say, uh, mentality. And therefore a devotee is always seeing the good in others and focusing on that, although they may see something else. Here it's another interesting point which I was really inspired to speak about after reading this purport, is that the reactions of sinful activities. We see that when someone commits a sinful activity, which is a crime, because we see here there are murderers, there are thieves, there are people who take another person's wife, there are drunkards, all these are against civil laws. So one is subject to be punished by the civil laws. But that's not enough. One gets diseases because of the reactions. And then after that, if there's no, what we say, prashchitya, atonement done, then they also have to suffer later on by getting a, a birth in, with reactions due to their past sinful activities. So you see how sinful activities has so many bad reactions to it here. We might do a little bit of uh, what we say connections that now in this world people are really suffering from this coronavirus and people are dying wholesale. It's like every day there's, there's hundreds of people are dying, still now, in India especially and in America and in other places around the world um, because of sinful activities. It's due to sinful. And what is those sinful activities? Killing children in the womb, and killing cows, animals, and eating animal flesh, and thinking this is uh, what we say a nice way to enjoy the eating. So all these sinful reactions are coming in the form of various types of uh, reactions on a larger scale. When collective karma builds up to a certain point, just like if you have a boil or a sore. A sore, if it's not treated properly, becomes infected, it can turn into a boil. And then when it comes, it becomes really sore, and then it starts to ooze, and then it breaks, and then all the these nasty substances come out. 
So that starts with a little contamination within the body and then gradually builds up until it's actually a very a horrendous type of, you know, what we say, uh, disease. So in the same way, sinful activities at first may seem that, you know, people go on in life and it seems like there's no reactions that are sinful, but then all of a sudden as it starts to build, Time catches up, and then you have what is called collective cash-in. Everything starts to... And this is what you're seeing now. The world is going through a purification. Because reactions to sinful activities are a form of purification, both for the earth and for the people who have committed sinful activities. Of course, we don't want to see that. and We want to give them Krishna consciousness, and so they can avoid that and actually make progress in the goal of life. The devotee doesn't like to see anyone suffer. One of the qualities of knowledge is that Prabhupada says, a person in knowledge has three characteristics that are outstanding. One, they see all women other than their wife as mother, and they treat them in that way. They see other persons' possessions as simply something untouchable or what we probably would use the, the word by Chanaka Panda, something that's like garbage in the street. Prabhupada said, well, if somebody lost something valuable and it'd be laying in the middle of the road, no one would touch it. They would wait for the person who lost it to come back and reclaim his possession. And if someone picked it up and kept it, that person would be considered a thief and, then, and it would be punishable because of that. So to see other person's possession as something untouchable. And the last thing is, Prabhupada uses the example, if I pinch you, you know, if, I, if you pinch me, that's uncomfortable for me. Why should I pinch you? So do unto others as you would have them do unto you. you know, they call it the golden rule. The idea is that um, one who, we don't like to suffer ourselves, so when we see other people suffer, we also feel unhappy because of that. So this is, the, this is what is called the characteristics or consciousness of one who actually is intelligent. These are symptoms of intelligence. And Prabhupada qualifies that by saying, you know, you may have so much Shastric knowledge, but real intelligence is these three things. <laughs> It's really, it comes down to learning. Actually, as Prabhupada really pushed the point, behavior is more important than Shastric knowledge. How the Vaishnav behaves. We have our Bhakti Charu Maharaj, who just departed from the world, which was a great calamity for the whole society. He was the ideal in, in Vaishnav behavior. So kind, so concerned about everyone and so gentlemanly and how he dealt with everybody. He was also strict, he was also firm. He wouldn't tolerate nonsense in the name of being polite, that wasn't his. But at the same time, he had, he had that vision that every, every living entity is part of Krishna and therefore every living entity deserves to be, deserves to be respected accordingly. So, this idea of behavior is so important in Vaishnava culture. So those who commit sinful activities, we can see such horrendous reactions. Murderers are later affected by tu tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is a killer disease, Jai Shishi Panchatattva Ki Jai. Shishi Gornitai Ki Jai. Uh, drunkards become toothless. Why? Because alcohol destroys your teeth. <laughs> uh, those who have stolen gold, they become, their, they had diseased nails. Like, and those who have sexual connections with the wife of a superior are afflicted by leprosy and other similar skin diseases. Wow, pretty heavy stuff. When you read this, you think, I'm not going to do any of this stuff. <laughs> I wouldn't even think about it. So, but, but people don't know that actually, you know, they're accountable for everything they do. And, and therefore, everything is according to the 
activity, there is a reaction that is occurring, and sometimes, with sometimes, most of the times, at least it's here, it seems like the reaction is even stronger than the offense. <laughs> Because one, one, you know, one, one dies because of many of these diseases. So this is uh, this is something that is very uh, prominent in today's world that people are getting the results of their sinful action on a, on a very, what we say, broad scale. It's 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 sad when when you actually see it. But actually, this is this is material nature. Prabhupada said, material nature. Don't play with it. <laughs> it doesn't give you any, you know. Krishna is merciful, and Krishna can somehow or whether withdraw the reactions of sinful activity when we take serious shelter of Krishna. But don't play with the material energy. It's very heavy. It's shushti shushti palaya. It can create. It can destroy. It's very powerful. Krishna's external energy, and it's more powerful. Uh, the, although we are spiritual beings, still, this material energy, you just, you know, Prabhupada said, it's just all of a sudden, this whole, you know, the whole earth can just simply destroy itself, simply by its own power. It's that powerful. So, yeah, therefore, the way devotees have to be very, very conscious to always. Uh, live in such a way as to not to play with the material energy in the wrong way. <laughs> because there is reactions to those things. But for a devotee, sometimes it's just a little slap. But Krishna will give you a slap. Hey! You're not supposed to be there. That's just a little reminder. But for the non-devotees, because they don't have, they haven't taken shelter of Krishna, and due course of time, they get the full reactions of their sinful activities. There was one, you know, it's kind of a sad story where one uh, one executive, this was in France, and he was with his secretary, and his secretary had done something really, we don't, I don't really know what, but he was really chastising his secretary. And they were walking together outside, and he was so angry at his secretary that he actually didn't even look where he was going. And he walked right in front of a car, and that's the last thing he said. <laughs> so he became so overwhelmed with anger that he just didn't even see where he was going. He got, pretty much got a reaction for his bad activities. It's like that sometimes, a little slip, and all of a sudden, you can be completely out, you know. Watch when you walk down the stairs. <laughs> you know, I know people who have fallen down the stairs and that was the last thing they did in their life, you know. So this is how this material energy is. It's just very, what we say, uncertain, precarious, dangerous. The so bodies have to be very careful. And what is the best way to be careful, aside from taking cautions and activity? Always remember Krishna. This is the formula for success. No, 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 I don't need to protect you against the material energy, but to purify your consciousness and bring you to a state of transcendence. Practice remembering Krishna as much as possible. We chant the holy names of the Lord, our japa, and that sets the, the consciousness for we can remember Krishna throughout the day. But then again, we have so many activities and we tend to get absorbed or diverted in our activities and we forget Krishna. But the Padma Purana gives a very, very strong statement. It says, it, it's more like rhetorical, it says, what is the greatest mistake? What is the greatest calamity? What is the greatest anomaly? And then it answers, to forget the Supreme Personality of Godhead for one moment that's the answer. Sometimes people think, well, what is the greatest calamity? Shastra says to forget Krishna. <laughs> to forget Krishna. So we want to remember Krishna because by remembering Krishna, we are with Krishna. To that intensity of that remembrance, to that degree, you can feel the presence of Krishna through remembering Krishna. 
Okay, so we'll see if there's any comments or questions on anything. Anyone? Yes, Maharaj. <laughs> you mentioned that we should be a dosha darshane, mm -hmm. but what happens if someone is doing the wrong thing and we don't see it as the wrong thing? We think, well, well I, everything they do is good. And then we also do the wrong thing. In other words, we copy them? Yeah, in other words, we're not supposed to see the fault, but what happens if we don't see that it's a fault and that we think everything is good? And therefore well, we, 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 we follow no, the wrong that, thing. And that's not the idea. To see it as the fault is fine, but to, to criticize the person is the... Where is he? There's a statement that says, those who see both faults and good qualities side by side, that's generally devotees. We have a tendency to see bo both, but the queer, where do you want to emphasize your, you know, your attention? So, but if something is disturbing the society of the devotee, or if, even if it's hurting that person, rather than doing it in a critical way, one may point out something in order to help that person. But ha that has to be done in such a way as not to disturb, because if you're disturbing the person who's disturbing, then everything becomes more disturbed. <laughs> then they become defensive. So that's another art, how to correct. The art of correction is another thing. And then again, am I in the position to correct that person? Or is it just something that is really not so important? Maybe it's a person's character fault or something. Like, you know, I, I see a lot of, I mean, I don't want to be critical, but I see a lot of wrong behavior in the temple. Because I was trained by, by, by Prabhupada and by those days to know what temple behavior is. I mean, I don't even follow it perfectly myself. <laughs> Anyway, but I know there's certain things we shouldn't be doing in the temple when we're worshiping or even when we're in the temple. So, but, you know, I don't say anything because it's another offense is to say, th to criticize someone before the deities. So I'm committing offense to try to rectify an offense. But the best thing to do is to have someone who is the temple commander leader who knows these things and later on can point it out to the devotees so they don't continue doing that. But if they continue to do that, not knowing it's wrong, then what we say, then that person is also getting a reaction for that. So there's a responsibility to make sure things go on nicely. But I won't say anything because of the, you know, that service is going on like that. So we have to somehow or other use our discretion on how to make the corrections if there's if it's required. That's a that's a very sensitive subject because there's a lot of dynamics to it which warrant action or not action depending on the person and on, on what is being ha what is happening. But in general, the idea is not to see faults in others. Let's try to see their good qualities. Everybody has both. Unless you're a pure devotee, then you only have good qualities. I don't know if that was good enough. But we'll leave it that, at that, or should we pursue it farther? It's okay? Okay, thank you much. <laughs> Adi, you have something? Hare Krishna. You, you mentioned about uh, criticizing and praising. And this is a frequent question. What about uh, criticizing our own selves, being self-critical? Uh, what's the place of it? To, to which extent can we be self-critical? Critical. Some studies show that 80% of our thoughts are self-condemnation, uh, on average, for, for an average person. So self-condemnation is another type of fault, right? Yeah. Well, the thing is, it's not like you destroy yourself. 
<laughs> it's not the idea. But if you know your, you know, a little evaluation, a little introspection on how to improve, will help us to see that there maybe there are certain things that we need to work on. But it should be done in a way that, you know, okay, this is what it is, and therefore I'm going to work on it. But not like, oh, I'm a wretch, I'm a pig, you know. I'm no good, oh, I just don't even want to come out of the house anymore. <laughs> I'm just so low. Someone said to Prabhupada, Prabhupada, I'm the most fallen. Prabhupada said, you're the most, you're not the most anything. <laughs> so there's, there's those who are, you know, just like make a mess out of themselves. And that's not the idea. That's not humility. That's some kind of uh, just, I don't know, sadistic behavior. I'm not masochistic behavior, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I mean, we should evaluate. Well, maybe I have to work on, I can see there's something I'm, I need to work on. So. Is that all right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, continue. Regarding nails and stealing, stealing gold. Hmm. Having bad nails for stealing something seems very mild. Some people really suffer when there is a theft and uh, all the punishment is just, the guy just gets bad nails. Um, I'm not in a position to change the Shastra here. <laughs> but we might use, you know, philosophical speculation and say, well, there's other things that are involved with that. If they get caught, <laughs> they're punished by the civil society. Yes, Mark. Well, bad nails are just a symptom of a underlying cause which is afflicting them. It's not that you just get big, bad nails. Okay, yeah, so... Generally, bad nails is a symptom of a problem in internal organs, especially the uh, liver, hmm. and maybe even the kidneys. Well, if it, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, so. There's something else there. Yeah, that's a good point. Thank you. Yeah, we need our minister of health to help us with it. <laughs> we can't see all the subtle aspects of disease. Thank you. Anything else? Yes. Hare Krishna. Mm. Uh, am I uh, uh, considered as a thief if I found the money and pick it up and put a donation to Krishna? Um, Prabhupada also says that if you pick it up and try to bring it back to the owner, then you're actually an intelligent person. It says that three, three types of people will see the situation. One will think, oh, well, it's not mine, I'll just leave it there. Two, I'll steal it. And the third person will say, well, it belongs to something, let me, let me try to find that person. So that's how Prabhupada answered that. So if you might say, well, everything belongs to Krishna, <laughs> and sometimes that is taken in the wrong way. <laughs> That, you know, like, you know, we can cheat people out of their money so we give it to Krishna because it's his anyway and they're the cheaters for taking it in the first place. But that won't work. So I think you have to use your discretion. Basically, you know, if something is laying there for for extended period of time, then you might, you know, bring it to the Lord. But generally, when something is lost immediately, you leave it there. Because usually the person becomes conscious of the fact that they lost something and will go back for that, generally. So, but, yeah, I think you have to see that, you know. I mean, if you have the right intention, then you're not going to get a reaction. If you want to deliver it to the owner, that's important. Anything else? 
Okay, thank you very much, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.